Uh, Airbnb Dodo 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 wants to know, how, uh, Liam, how surprised were you that Essek actually agreed to teach Caleb some spells? And were they what you slash Caleb were hoping for? Uh, didn't know what to expect. Was surprised that he wanted to. Mm. Um, and is suspicious of it, but will play the game. Yeah, cool spells, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. The other one, one of them was initiative, and the other one was sort of a luck thing. Um, yeah, both ways of sort of bending, bending reality to your will. Uh, and I think he was, he still does. Caleb still really wants to get into the tomes, but uh, now it seems like he has an open invitation, as long as they don't, you know totally fucking burn down houses and murder animals and kill Dragonborn in the middle of the street. You know, mm -hmm. as long as they do right by the Bright Queen, he should be in like Flynn with that Essay guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, good to go. How does not feel about Essek, Thalos, and how he seems to be closest to Caleb out of the Mighty Nine, is she concerned that Essek might be trying to use Caleb, or is she more interested in Caleb being more sociable with people? I think she's just happy that Caleb has ha found a new friend a in buddy. town. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and seem, they seem to get along, they talk about things. You know, whenever, I, I think she would love it if, if Essek would float over more often mm. just to visit. Mm. Because they seem to He's really so play. Go get you. yourself one of those trial boyfriends. <laughs> they play well together, there's no fighting. Um, they, they clearly have some bonding over yeah. these books. He can float over whenever he wants to. <laughs> really like this boy. Yeah. I really like him. He's the him. same age ish, maybe. I hear he's from Dente. <laughs> <laughs> he and the Bright Queen seem to be really tight. Oh boy. Oh boy. Caleb took a big dunamantic step <laughs> toward <laughs> and solidified his friendship with Essex. What does Essex trust now mean to Caleb? Drop the dunes. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I, I'm not entirely certain that Essek does. Oh, what is wrong with my hair? <laughs> it's it's. Get it out of your face, Caleb. I thought you cleaned yourself up yeah, after all. That's better. Yeah, the Yorsh. I can't shave. I'm a doll. I do not know how to shave. <laughs> wow. Um, so I am not sure that Essek trusts me in the first place. And I, I think he does. I, I disagree, agree to disagree. <laughs> and um, I, I don't really trust Essek either. I assume that he is uh, working me for his own angles. I think Essek really likes you. He's working you for his own angles? This is the best yeah, thing that's ever happened. You can take the, the sexual innuendo is baked into the answer because I do think that Essek maybe likes the cut of my jib and... Um, <laughs> I yeah. think that that I think that uh, Caleb thinks that Essek is is trying to stack up favors and get him under his thumb. He might even be a mole. Caleb's not <gasps> sure. Whoa. Uh, he is he is catching those vibes that Wouldn't Essek it be is throwing. So great though, if Essek just wanted a friend. Sure, it would be He just be hasn't great. had one in his life would, because of his environment. That would be awesome if that's how it turns out. And once they have done the deed, I'll tell you what the answer is. Okay. Caleb takes debts and favors very seriously. Is he concerned about how much both the party in general and he specifically owe to Essek? Hmm. Well, he did promise a lot to Trent Ikathon. We all know how that ended. <laughs> um... I mean, it's for being named Trent. It's true. Apologies to the Trents out there. Um, I have, now I have forgotten the question. About uh, what you guys owe to Essex. Oh, how, how do I feel, how does Caleb feel about like debts and... Yeah. Um, well, I think he wants to keep all the balls in the air. I think he feels like they're clever enough to... Uh, Why do you keep doing this? What, talk about testicles? Every answer <laughs> has so many layers of innuendo. I hear them laughing back here. I hear them la laughing, and if they're laughing, it means it's something dirty. <laughs> anyway, continue. Listen, you got to crunch these nuts somehow. Oh. And um, <laughs> he, he thinks that they can play all sides, and not in a not in a. Oh, I'm gonna hoodwink everyone, but like they can they can meet the needs of the different people that they're they're dealing with. Yeah. 
Um, he's trying to, he's trying, I mean, it's a long shot, but he's trying to actually broker some sort of a, a, a piece. You know, one, one in a thousand chance, but that's what he's giving, giving a shot. Yeah. Last episode was the first episode where Caleb willingly demonstrated a more physical attempt of a connection with Essek. Did he read something on Essex's expression that warranted that reaction? Or was it because I told him to kiss him? Or was it because Laura told you to kiss him? Or was it simply Caleb's evolution towards his own uh, dealings with people he is closest to? Um, you know, a lot of people have, have asked me on social if it was to do with the whisper, it had nothing to do with the whisper. Mm. Um, I feel like we've been wearing out our welcome. We have been wearing our oh, welcome. Boy. And he, just seemed to me uh, like put out, and um, it just seemed like a way to try to like. I think that both Caleb and Essek are playing each other a little bit. At least that's the way it feels to me. Um, but they also enjoy each other's company, and I don't think it has to be exclusively one of those things or the other. No, yeah. and. Um, He's he's fun in his way with the Mighty Nine, and why not? Yeah, absolutely. If it, it, would, mm -hmm. it didn't didn't seem to work too well, he seemed right. a little <laughs> no, it didn't. taken aback, but <laughs> which is a shock to no one. Yeah. <laughs> what are you? Doing? I'm just kidding. A shock to no one in this campaign, really. The Mighty Nine put themselves even further in debt to Essek with the teleport spells to get to the Lotus Den. How are you two feeling about inevitably having to tell Essek that their mission failed upon the party's return to Rosh Hashanah? Well, I think it's fucking partially his fault. He should have stayed with us. He's okay. powerful, why wouldn't he help? The fate of the world is in <clears throat> our hands and he's not fucking caring enough. Fair point. Lori has a bumper sticker on her car that says, blame the NPC. But, yeah. <laughs> That is a good bumper sticker. I like that bumper sticker. You like it? I am. I am into that bumper sticker. Rachel, let's uh, fast track that. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's yeah. the NPCs. I blame the NPCs. But also, it feels like shit. It yeah. does, yeah. Uh, they totally just talked to Eskim and like, we totally outsmarted this dragon. We're the best when it had nothing to do with you and your kingdom and all. We were so awesome. Anyway, help us with this thing. Mm -hmm. Womp. Yeah. yeah. Oops. I have friends like that. It's really annoying. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can help me move this weekend? Sure, yeah. Essek has mentioned that he will require the Mighty Nine's help soon. Hmm. Do you have any expectations of what kind of favors he might ask? What will you do if he asks you to do something the group is uncomfortable <laughs> with? Chris, are you playing me off? The music is getting louder. What is happening to this program? Program. Program. Yes. <laughs> this is a this very program. important program. <laughs> you are tuning into BBC for Dr. Magana. <sighs> anyway, answer the goddamn question. I don't this know what he, of, I have no clue what he wants from us. I, uh, yeah, I don't either. I assume, um, like, uh, uh, morally ambiguous missions for the like dynasty. Like quests. That, but, but things that are kind of rough, like what if it's go into the Empire and take out all these orphans? What? I'm being facetious, He's but it, it could be something that. that is like, this is uncomfortable, you need to go sabotage the war efforts of the Empire in this specific place, which could be difficult. You think it's gonna be that dark? I don't know, it's Mercer. <sighs> I just hope that Essek is good, I just, Really want to have like a, a good person that's our ally. Other than, I mean, obviously. Now Mary. you know how we feel about the Mighty Nine. <gasps> <gasps> Brian Foster. Wow. Danny, am I wrong? Wow. Matt, this question is from Essexophone. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Hot boy. It's kind a of saxophone. funny. Yep. What? A saxophone. That's what I said. Yep. Matt, between <laughs> his reluctance to talk about himself, his offer to teleport the Nine, and his admiration of the group's vulnerability in court. Does Essek have imposter syndrome? <laughs> he loves doing that. I'm just having too much fun with this I know, thing. it's great. It's <laughs> um, like a great stress ball for you. Shall we bring it to the rave after? <laughs> the octa rave? Yeah. Um, I would say, 
he, like any individual who grows up a prodigy, who grows up f- coming to power and prominence at a younger age than those around them, mm. there is a natural separation from a lot of their, uh, let's just say, family, social circle, and such. Essek is very much compared to, even within his, his den, you know, a solitary figure. Mm. And so, in a, in a way, I think he, um, there's a unique kinship he didn't expect to find within the Mighty Nine, given the time they've had together. He, you know, was eager for these strange new folks that arrived in the middle of Rosona against all odds with, you know, one of their most uh, sought after religious artifacts and, and the effect they've had on the world around them since they did. Hmm. So I think he's deeply fascinated and, um, uh, like, I think primarily just feels a little uncomfortable being the center of attention in a space where he doesn't feel like he's having to present and be what is expected of him in every other other facet of his life. You know, he's a complicated character, and there's a lot of things in there that you know, you know, I don't want to talk about because maybe they'll come out in the story, maybe yeah, you know, conversations like that. But uh, he's he's got a lot of he's got a lot of layers as to where his head is at. And the unexpected dynamic he's built with the Mighty Nine, uh, and that's definitely been—it's been a unique thing to kind of experience through him internally. You know, one of my favorite things about being a dungeon master and creating these characters is then getting to step into their skin, have you guys continue to surprise me with these interactions, and kind of through proxy process these emotions as another person. And it's it's wild, you know. In many ways, it's hard for it not to affect you in some small ways, and you learn a lot about yourself by being in that uh, that seat. And that's part of the reason why I just love this game and what it allows you to do. Um, that's it's a lot of fun to play, and uh, it's been a really it's been been an interesting path they've all taken together. How did Essex feel about the long period of time without a message from Jester? Was he worried the Mighty Nine were dead or had shifted their allegiances to the side of the Empire? I think he was more just happy to not get them out of the blue all the time. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> or, Straight up. or like a Lyft driver being summoned to bring him somewhere mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. No, I th- I'm sure there was concern. Um, I mean, he's had a lot of his own stuff to worry about and you know his place amongst the, uh, the other higher end den members that surround the Bright Queen and kind of advise on the current conflict and where it stands. Um, I'm sure he was concerned and was happy to hear that they were okay, but as is a person of his training, his station, and just his general persona and why, how he likes to present himself, he would never openly show that concern at first, you know? I think, I think given who he is and, and how he likes to, likes other people to think of him, he would be, you know, you can maybe see it in his eyes for a moment when he first got the message and was like, Good, of course. Yeah. I assumed you'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Too cool for school a little bit. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley. One ball, two, back to the Every ball. time you ask the question, one of them dies. How does Essek uh, celebrate the holidays? <laughs> Great difficulty. Probably. Floating his happy Reading. Reading. Yeah. Reading. Reading, studying. I bet he'd be a wonderful figure skater, though. That's some, bull, that's some bullshit cheating. <laughs> they have like a close, yeah. like, my God, triple axle. And it's like, He's not never touching. fallen, not once. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, gravity, wee! <laughs> <laughs> How fun. After learning so much about Essek in the previous episode and seeing him playing a major part in finishing that spell as well as the ritual for Nott, what is your respective character's opinion about him now? I don't trust him. I don't trust him either. <laughs> uh, Interesting. Not a bit. No, not a bit. Interesting. He just went from being cold and 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 aloof to being all of a sudden like really warm. And I know there's been time, and I know he's probably. He, it seems like he v- lives a very isolated life, and he's probably putting himself out there and all those things. And with time, he'll it'll show that he's being genuine. Maybe. But all of our all of our haunches were up. We were all on level five alert. Yeah. Inside check, inside yeah. check, inside yeah. check. It, and ever since we had that interaction with him and the prisoner that he was questioning, or that he let you go down and yep. question, mm-hmm. 
something's just something didn't set sit right with me for that. I got a whisper around there too that sort of sort of gave gave me a little bit of a well hairs on the back of my neck stand up a little bit. Don't you have those waxed? <laughs> yeah, but Olga's out of town for I a couple weeks. Oh, so. I understand. Yeah, it's um, Oktoberfest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's October somewhere. <laughs> um, it's Oktoberfest somewhere. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I don't know. He's just, he's being so, so helpful. Like, I don't know. We're also, we're, we're so, we played with Mercer long enough. We remember Raisha and we remember like totally, the yeah. betrayals of. He's all, we've also been giving Essek like all this. We're spilling dirt left and right, sharing secrets, giving him vials of, of shit, telling him about extra dodecahedrons that are out there in the mm -hmm. world. We really have opened up. Yeah, we're making him look pretty good. Yeah. I mean, he could just be riding the coattails of, you know, the mighty name. I would not be surprised, though, if he, if he stabs us in the back. Who? Who would he stab first? Well, Caleb. Caleb, probably? Ooh, Caleb is. Th the is the most powerful. Oh. The obvious choice. Yeah. And you can never hear us coming because he floats in. <laughs> wow. Stabs you in the back. Wow. We should, dev we, we should devise a booby trap for that. Like a tripwire that's yeah. eight inches up. <laughs> or so. I know you've mentioned NPCs from campaign one that you most identify with slash cherish. Now that we are all well into campaign two, who stands out for you as those NPCs so far in this campaign? Elements of Essex. Mm. Essex a delightfully complicated character. Uh, and True. I love them. <laughs> yeah, it, Essex also has gotten in, involved in this story far more than I ever anticipated. Mm -hmm. in ways I didn't expect, and I'm real interested to see where this all goes. Yeah, I mean, oh, so many elements of it. I don't. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> Simply Haunted wants to know, the transformation spell Caleb finished with Nott and Essek's help seems to be a very powerful spell, but you didn't hesitate to share it with Essek. Did you view that as a, as a returning one of his many favors or something else? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Gotta make trust, man. Mm -hmm. For sure, that guy helped us out. Um, and, um, like I don't expect him to turn on us, and, I, and if, if he wants to use it for whatever he wants to use it for, all power to him. Caleb likes Essek a lot. Um, they are like two like highly gifted kids at at, at school together, um, and you know he's 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 quirkily charming and handsome and and um, uh, like there's just no reason not to in his mind. Yeah, you know he's a, he's a outside of the mighty nine. He's probably the only person that Caleb would see as a friend that he's made. Um, which makes him a rarity in all the NPCs. Really, everybody else is just sort of scenery around the Mighty Nine. No, it was, I mean, like, and, and real trust requires vulnerability. You have to, mm -hmm. you have to put something into it if you expect to get anything yeah. out of it. Yeah, and better that than say, like, all right, I need you to go and kill, you know, X, Y, and Z in the highest tower in, in right. Rexentrum. Right. So here's yeah. the spell that wasn't mine to begin with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Prior to the reveal of Essex's secret, how trusting of him were you? Did you slash your characters have any suspicions that he was the one who had traded away the beacons? You're, you're talking to the most suspicious person on the planet over here. She suspects everybody and everything that we meet in the game. We meet a cute <laughs> yeah. little orphan child. She's like, insight check. We, okay, an early story that we did in our home campaign was about a bunch of little kids. Yeah. And it was like the dread, the dread lord who was disguised as a golden light boy. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying kids you're are, suspicious. Yeah. Uh, I never trusted Essek. But mm -hmm. I think a lot of us didn't. And there was yeah. a second I feel like we we talked about him potentially being the mole. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that brought up at one point? Yeah, or maybe so even that was a sidebar conversation. A few weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago. It wasn't that long. I ago. got a whisper about Essex that I didn't really share with the rest of you. Oh, this bitch. Um, but yeah, he, yeah, I, I, I. What was it? It was at the live show in Chicago. It will be revealed. 
<laughs> wow, the, yeah, very the whisper was specific. Mercer knows his shit. Essek wow. is a traitor and will betray you. <laughs> no, it was when we were was it hot tub time? we were interrogating the prisoner in the prison in Rex, not Rexentrum, in uh, Jorhaus. Jorhaus, yeah. Um, and we had just finished interrogating them, and I did an insight check and rolled super high. And Matt said that that Essek was behaving weird. And uh, there was something about that prisoner that he was lying about, and that uh, you noticed that uh, not noticed that he was uh, he was completely uh, not himself uh, mm. when, when we were talking about the the prisoner and, and that kind of stuff. Interesting, interesting. So I had an inkling that something was going on, but I also didn't want to share it with you guys because that's more fun. <laughs> well, of course, of course, of course, of course, yeah. Yet you told Caleb, who didn't name a spell after. Oh, you're totally right. Oh. I should still be mad about that. Danny, oh, Danny, we went. <laughs> we went 30 seconds without thinking about it, Danny. Uh, Marisha. He is. Sam Regal's legs wants to know. <laughs> no way. No, yep. it's not. They do want to know. No, it's they not. have a question. Yeah, your legs. Oh have wow! Oh my God. Good spelling. Bo really drilled at home that Essex's actions cost the lives of thousands of innocents. Mm -hmm. Does she see a path to redemption for him? If so, what does it look like? Stop it. She's <sighs> about to answer a question, God damn it. Sorry, sorry. He is a war criminal. Like mm -hmm. a super, it's like, it's like real big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on war the chart criminal. of us, it's like there's me, right? Mm -hmm. Minor war criminal. Right, and then like <laughs> war criminals up there. Yeah, yeah, then Pol Pot is like at the top. Uh huh. And Essek is near the near the near top. top. It, was there a question from yes. Marisha oh. a minute ago? It was, it, it, something about forgiveness, or, or is he? Or, oh yeah, path to redemption. Yeah. Path yeah. Path um, path. Yeah, war criminal. Uh, yeah, I mean, but it's kind of what what not said, what Veth said at the at the end, which was so poignant. We're broken people. Yeah. Just like he is. Yeah, with like shitty goals that you then are like, oh, well, not those goals, but these goals. You said it really well on the night. Broken a, a path you didn't know how to complete. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. I, there, I mean, there's a lot of similarities between us and Essex. And we've managed to, well, maybe not find redemption yet, but at least we're, we're, we're all on a path towards it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe there's I a hope for so. him as well. I think so. I mean, and then he can also like die and then come back and get like another chance and then die and come back. He's basically like the plot of the good place. Yeah. Maybe we should just kill him and have him start over again. <laughs> like It'll take a while. Mm. Fresh start. Reboot? Reboot. Mm, reboot, yeah. Hard reboot. Mm. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I wonder, this is be a Matt question, but I wonder if there's like, if people commit like really heinous crimes in Jorhas, mm -hmm. is there a way to like, Unconsecute them? Like, is that like the major punishment or something? Mm. Is if like you like do something really fucking shitty? Yeah. Do you like, are, is there ever a point where they're like, you're done, you're out? That is a good question. Wow. Mm. Unconsecute something. Like if you stole a. Or if they just like, or if they like kill them, but they're like not close to a beacon, I think that would work. Mm. Pro consecute, mm. co consecrate, co Pro? I don't think it's in I that. Don't I don't think it's that same way. I don't. I don't know though. Huh? Huh? I wish I knew etymology better. <laughs> for me. Stop looking at me. Et <laughs> You're so beautiful, Danny. Etymology. <laughs> yeah. Sam. Yeah. Oh, hi. Carrie Gore wants to know. Nod has frequently been one of the more paranoid members of the Mighty Nine, appearing very suspicious of strangers. How surprised were you at Essex's sudden but inevitable betrayal? Do you think Veth will extend him further trust going forward? Well, uh, as Marisha alluded, um, you know, uh, we're all a little surprised and uh, maybe there's a path forward for him, but uh, but yeah, I think there's gotta be some consequences for this guy. I think Veth especially would, uh, would feel like there's, got, there's gotta be some sort of punishment for the, for the crime. You can't just, can't just like pretend like it never happened. He started a war. And like your husband was- A victim. A victim of all that. Yeah. Along with like, well, kind of a decent amount of people yeah. near us. Yeah. Dyeron almost died. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
We almost died we because almost of the actions. Yeah. I don't know. That's it's it's going to be really tricky. I think that's what ne the next episode is about. So, consecution can cause a sort of insanity. Is Essek aware of this? And if he did, did it factor into his reasons for giving the beacon to the Cerberus Assembly for research? <laughs> um, no, it did not play into that. And and consecution, it doesn't doesn't create a form of insanity necessarily. Being consecuted, um, there are. There are rumors uh, on high-level elements of the, the dynasty that uh, certain Umavi who have gone through too many lifetimes, it becomes difficult for them to, to kind of transpose all those big life experiences over and it begins to cause behavioral issues and such. Um, and it goes into detail a little bit more in the book, um, but that did not factor into Essex's uh, question. Essex, uh, hilariously, is... Uh, eh, it's not a huge spoiler. Not really. Uh, he's not consecuted. He's, he's not? No. He lied about that? He's lying? What? Or is he? Well, now you have to say that. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of Liam, Caleb has, to, to put it lightly, wrestled with the concept of redemption for a long time, but seems to see it as an option for people like Essek, Eodwolf, Astrid. So does his desire to see those people redeemed mean he could ever see it for himself or does he still, you know, we've talked about this so much, but I, I do want to know like the prog progress of where he's at. Like, does he still view himself as completely beyond redemption? Um, Astrid and Ed Wolf deserve the ability to be brought as far along as he has by the mighty nine they probably don't have anyone in their lives who could do that because they're surrounded by the system that made them mm. and and Caleb broke off and has been shaped by these these better people um and then with uh man Essek that's a complicated thing too um god that happened ages ago before in the before times <laughs> in the before times yes. and that's complicated too like god there's so many aspects of that that I could talk about Essek so like Caleb, there's a certain aspect of his training when, and he only made it a very short way into it before he got ejected out. But um, it was subtly like encouraged, suggested or, or baked into them that like do whatever you need to do to get things done, be that violent or um, sexual or uh, just whatever it takes to serve the empire with Essek. Um, Kale's relationship to Essek was many things, is many things. He's a little out of their sphere right now. Like they're dealing with other things and Essek is, the, like people wanted to like go find Essek and bring him down. And I think in that moment, like Caleb was like, he thought it wasn't so much like protect my friend, even though he did have care for Essek and, and, and attraction to Essek. But it was more like, I need to go back home and I need to fix our yard, not their yard. That's their country. And we've helped here, but that's that's I don't speak for the for, for this place. I speak for that place. Mm. So if you want to fucking exact vengeance or if you want to make shit work, let's go home and fix our shit, not that shit. Yeah, you made that. So that's clear. why he shot that down with the, the nine or tried to. And then like the 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 time on the boat where he like kissed him on the forehead, like again, attraction to Essex is real. And care for Essek and like in intellectual attraction is real too. But in that moment, that was many things. It wasn't just like, oh, I really, I'm really attracted to you and, and I want to be with you. It was also like, there's a lot at stake here and I can't let this get fucked up. So I'm going to say whatever I need to say right now to keep you on the rails and get through this. Mm. So don't go spinning off into despair or break your plan. We need everything to go as it did. So everything he said to Essek was true. And his attraction to Essek is, is true. But also Caleb was, was drawing on past experience and past training to make sure things went the way they needed to go. Um, boy, I talked about a lot of things in addition to redemption. I'm very so glad like, you just did, though. So Caleb, I mean, I, Caleb would like for Essek to have redemption, but... If if I'm if I'm weighing all the things that Caleb has to focus on, including the nine, the empire, the eyes of nine, trying to his teacher and his ex classmates, Essek doesn't 
like Essek is not as high on the list of things that he, he needs to work on. Um, yeah. but it doesn't mean that like their time that they spent there and like he, Essek, Essek is not like the nine. Essek is very, is brilliant and, and gets it the way that Caleb gets it. So like, that was great to be around. I don't know. That was How does Caleb answer. like to get it? Well, he hasn't gotten it in a very <clears throat> long time. I was, it's uh, been a while. it's been a while. Been a while. Critters will see that uh, as soon as as soon as <laughs> Liam sort of started that answer, I was furiously looking to Danny's window to see how she was <laughs> responding in real time to what he's saying. Because normally I can just look, you know, I can just look at Danny and be like, ah, <laughs> you know, because the camera's not on me when you're answering the questions. But now I'm. Now I'm, we're all on at the same time, so I have to look at Danny and be like, "Oh my God, she's loving this." She's I am it. respectfully watching <laughs> the game. I I love all the shit with Essek because it's like high spy times, and Essek was fucking manipulating us and a lot of people. I yeah. was I was I was I mean again like you think about spies and there's this, there's a definitely a, a, a level of re- realness and like they get close to each other and, and develop feelings for each other and care for each other, but they're also trying to achieve the things they are trying to achieve. And that motherfucker was true. doing some shit, some shit that had yeah. nothing to do with our feelings or our bus being happy or the empire being good. Or, you know, he was, he was going after his ends, man. Mm-hmm. So it's, me- it, again, it's messy. And that's what we like here is messy. All I can think of is just this is that this is all just an incredible prequel to the Spy Kids AU where oh, Caleb and Essek oh, are the gosh. parents. <laughs> oh my gosh. Those sp- those Spy Kids movies were lit back in the I day. I can see that. Dude, see they that. were so good. Hmm. Oh I could see a version of the future where Caleb and Essek are like spy masters of their respective countries, but every once in a while they'll meet up like, what am I thinking of? Of um, Killing Eve, uh, oh, Fiona man. Shaw ah, I still watch and that. her ex-lover, like, but they're still spy masters of different countries going like, oh, hey, you, I remember when we remember, but we're also fucking spies. <laughs> It's great. It's a lot of fun. Exactly. It's bigger, man. Two households. Yeah. Two households. Yeah. In yeah. Fairona. Yeah. Yes. Possibly. Alexandria, where we lay our scene. Yes. <laughs> yep. Caduceus uh, suggested contacting Essek and telling him everything about the crest, but Bo, as well as Caleb, nixed to that idea. Yeah. Does she think she can trust him with any of this knowledge? Gods, no. Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. She can like Essek personally, you know, as a person, he's fine, I guess. Um, but I think a lot of people might be, you know, maybe some on my team might be forgetting that he's kind of a war criminal and yeah. kind of set off a lot of bad things in motion with this war with the Empire and the Dynasty because. Yeah. You know, um, he wanted power and to know things. So now here he is, also in Aeor. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of putting two and two together there. So it is another one of those things of, gosh, it's just like the same thing with Lucian, where it's, you're kind of walking that line on trying to keep them on your good side and having a mutual using kind of mutually beneficial relationship before it could easily go completely south. Yeah. So I don't, she's not against getting in contact with him, but I, yeah, I don't think, cause you can kind of fight fire with fire. I think that's mm-hmm. where more her brain is going and being in contact with him is different than telling him more than maybe he, he could be trusted sh- with. Right, right. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's the thin line in the barrier. And mm-hmm. it's, I mean, like Matt said, it's um, it's a dance. How do uh, Caleb and Veth feel about the plan to go see Essek? Are they worried about him in this or do they think he will be, are they worried about including him in this or do they think he'll be helpful? Uh, he can only be helpful he can he can be very helpful, I, I believe. But something is Sam Regal, a player of Dungeons and Dragons, 
I'm super suspicious. What the fuck is Essek doing up there? So close, right now. Why? Why is he there? I don't mm. trust him as far as I can throw him. And I can throw him pretty far because he <laughs> <it> floats. <laughs> um, <laughs> why is he there? I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Mm -mm. Nope. But I'm still curious to find out. Sam, I'm, I'm about to blow your mind. I 100% agree with you. What? I, I do not understand what Essek could bring to what we are going through. I know that the audience loves him. I love him too. Liam loves him. He's a really cool character. He's fucking toxic. Yeah. He's not he's what been bad he, before. He'll be bad again. He, out of curiosity, caused a war between two nations. I, I, I don't know, like, and Caleb has been changed for the good by the Mighty Nine from months of travel with them, months of their influence. Essek has had none of that. None of that. Mm. I, I, it's dangerous. I, Prick Offerman, agree with you <laughs> um, that, 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 that something's up that we shouldn't. So we shouldn't trust, but on the other hand, we need all the firepower we can get, and he is he is a big cannon. He's a big gun. Big cannon. Against against who? The tomb takers? Yeah. Or or even against the Somnovum. Maybe, but I would call uh, Caleb would call Caleb has 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 changed for the good because of people like Veth and Beauregard mm -hmm. and Jester and Caduceus and Ford and Yasha. Not because of people like Essek. Essek is where Caleb came from. You know, uh, uh, Astrid and, and Eadwulf maybe are still mired in that. I, I, he, he did not show any signs of like, maybe he will someday, but we basically maintained, we kept the, the lid on the pot during the whole um, treaty at sea. It almost all went fucking sideways. Mm-hmm. And only because we pressed him into a corner. So I hope that guy finds some sort of balance and peace for himself. But I, I do not see how, how his input here would be helpful. Hmm. I would rather people like Allura or if we had to pull in somebody, if you want firepower, not that we can get anybody. I mean, I guess he's closer. Yeah, he's, he's got that closer. going for him. Yeah. But there's yep. other heavy hitters that I would try to like pull in. I would pull in Shakasta if I just wanted Ooh. backup, or or so Allura if Shikasta. I wanted backup. Shakasta. I mean, he's he's an attractive mm. man. Shakasta. Uh, but yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. But I don't yeah. know how that helps us deal with an all-powerful group hurt. of nine ancient mm. wizards. Can't yeah. Hurt. Mm -hmm. Wow. Man, here's an idea. Go. Imagine Essek. With a mustache. With Sam's mustache. Oh, Jesus Imagine Christ. it. Let's all just think about it. <laughs> I think that minute. just becomes late career Johnny Depp at that point. You know, Erica Sam, ruined. you need one of these is what you need. I hope at least I hope at least Caleb survives. I think we'll have a better chance with Essek on our side. I think so too. Although you do? I do. Travis, you're hmm. doubtful. Tell us why. A, a, a plus one, a powerful plus one. I'm not knocking Essek. But did you see his reaction when we were giving him the lowdown? Yeah, he no, he was ain't terrified. In it he, just yet. He might know, get yeah. there, but we're gonna need a little bit more than just Essex. He's so far the only one that's fully in it, right? Like everybody else is helping, but Essex Maybe. is the only one that's like, "I'll be there with you guys." Let's let's be real. We kind of trust Essex. We kind of assume Essek. that he's gonna be there when we come back. <laughs> I got fifty dollars that says when we come back, he's gone. Okay. He I trust that Essex. Fifty dollars. I think he's, a, I think. Payable to Brian Foster. I think Essex has extreme guilt and he wants to make things right. Like mm. he, he wants to like lighten his soul. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. We've just been conned one too many times in this campaign, Laura Bailey. I feel like, no, we have, no, Essex oh, on our we side. Have, we have. Con me once. A suspect. Shame on. Nope, don't even start. <laughs> Laura. <laughs> <laughs> what were the what were the great words of Travis Willingham? I don't trust Clorota. Oh yeah. I don't trust Clorota. All caps. <laughs> I don't trust Clorota. Yeah. 
It's written I on the whiteboard in his too. office. <laughs> I just, I am I not comparing don't. Essex to Clarota. I am not comparing Essex to Clarota. I just want to make that very clear. <laughs> don't yeah. you worry, Danny. I'll protect you from the internet. They got nothing. <laughs> we'll have Nightbot do a whole thing in chat, Danny. Don't worry about it. Um, an right. Another we'll both. Probably another moment like that was like uh, when we knew there was a, a, a traitor in the dynasty. And for the longest time, I, I thought it's Essek. It's Essek. This guy is playing us. Uh, he's super cool. He's super intelligent. He's he's spending a lot of time with us. This guy's got to be and and just nothing ever happened. And he just seemed to become you know, like a, a friend of ours. And I, and I got to the point where I'm like, well, I was wrong. He's he's fine. He's cool. He's our friend. And literally like two days later or seven seconds later, Matt. Well, it's because of uh, the Mighty Nine's antics, but we found out that that it was him the whole time. So just when when I got like complacent about it, and going like this guy's cool, whoop, rug rug yank. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's what the that same kind of thing with with being on the run and and having them invade Jester's house. Basically, mm. I was like, no, no, I didn't want this, and then it wasn't yeah. going to be. And here we are. Yeah. Now we're, now we're on the land. There was a possibility that you could have attempted an alliance with Trent, um, but Essek was unswayed. How are you feeling about your choice to ally with Essek? And, and do you think Trent would have accepted such an alliance even to begin with? I know how Caleb feels. We, yeah, I do too. I am so angry at that <laughs> die that <laughs> fucked me. Did you throw it away? Oh my god. No, because it most of the time great. it's amazing. I just it used matter, up though. all the good luck. Mm. It's turned on you. It, That's how I look at him. Oh my god. I could have been caught in the middle of a bisexual maelstrom with Astrid, Eadwolf, Essek, and Jester all in the same adventure. Wait, Jester? What a calendar. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm glad that you've tuned in for the first time, Sam. Caleb is secretly in love with Jester and has been keeping it to himself the entire time. What? Um, I only congrats. think about my character. I, I know. Um, <laughs> it would have been so interesting and awful and great to have, like, I mean, the the, the Essek and Astrid and Eadwolf are are fucking cool and beautiful and ambitious and everything that that Bren used to be attracted to and is uh, that are terrible for him. Uh, I mean, they're not yeah. the same way to like, uh, so, so complicated. Essek, he, hopefully he can, you know, with time find a way uh, out of the hole that he dug himself into, but he is still, uh, uh, I mean, it was only two months ago that all that, where he was like found out and his ambitions came crashing down around him. Long term, I have uh, high hopes for him, but it's going to be hard. Yeah, Caleb, no, Caleb knows from experience. Ostrid and Eadwolf, I would love for them to redeem themselves, but they are still deep in the shit. Deep, deep, deep in the shit. Um, but they're also, um, you know, Caleb still has that aspect of him that is drawn to, to like that, that, that eager intellect and and ambition and um, savvy. Um, so it would have been really hard to navigate, which of course would have been fun to play at the table. So that yeah. die can burn in hell forever. <laughs> yep. That having been said, we made the right choice with what we went with because Essek, while Caleb still thinks that he has a really long road to go, he, he hopes the best for him, but he's just getting started. Mm. Um, he's, and, and Caleb doesn't... In, trust him entirely because he was burned so hard not too long ago. Um, he's still more trustworthy than the other three. Yeah. Um, so it's the better choice because while Caleb has all these ties on the other side and, and emotional ties, it's still real. They're really fucking dangerous. So if you have to choose, you choose Essek. Yeah. But fuck <clears throat> that die. Yeah. Veth, much like Sam Regal makes split decisions instant decisions about whether to trust someone or not and sticks by it forever. Mm. So mm. of Good that strategy. group you just l laid out, uh, Astrid, 100% trust. Eadwolf, okay. 100% distrust. Interesting. Wow. Essek, 
completely distrust. I still don't think he's a good guy. I don't Ikki know. That's so hard. Trust. A hundred percent. Because you know where he, you know where he's coming from. He's very you know straight where he forward. Wants. He's very yeah. on the very, on the up and up. Uh huh. I still you want can, him dead, but I trust him. You can yep. you can trust him to be a piece of shit. Yeah. Is what you can trust. Danny. And it would have been so cool. I mean, we're trying to save the fucking world, and I know that that the Empire people are terrible, but we're trying to save the world, right? So can't we save the world for five minutes together? And then the other upside to it would be that we get Trent, a.k.a. Puxatani Phil, out of his <laughs> fucking gopher hole yeah, so that he's vulnerable, and then you have Astrid who who seems, seems like she'd be happy with him dead, and Essek to help, and all of the Mighty Nine. So it, while it would have been complicated, it would have been the perfect storm to bring that motherfucker down in the middle of an open field True. instead of his house. True, yeah. Yeah, on his Fuck favorite that terrain, die. man. Mm. Fuck that die. Straight to hell. Uh, for both of you, <laughs> let's talk about uh, a, a certain boy for a second. <laughs> How are you feeling about the choice to ally with Essek? over mm. attempting to ally with Trent. Yeah. How are we feeling about that right now? Marshall yeah. Roy. <laughs> Here's the thing. So <laughs> Bo wasn't like, ooh, allying with Trent. That's icky because of moral reasons. It's not that. Icky. Huh. Her, you know, once again, kind of go into that pragmatic, what's going to make sure Dagon agrees. Dagon agrees. Laura. Well, yeah, it was like, and just to talk, to go along with what your, your Magneto reference, like Essek is one really powerful, one powerful person that has Dunamancy. Trent brings Trent and the whole, all the acolytes, right? We're, we're still a pretty big party. We're still a party of seven people. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. So, yeah, it's... Did, was I wrong? Are we eight people? Well, with Essex, oh, Essex, well, with Essex. technically, eight but with Essex. <clears throat> yeah. everyone's used to forgetting about him. And, well, he's just so elusive. Not Tumblr. <laughs> oh, fuck no. <laughs> fuck no, not my Tumblr. Did I make that joke right? Is that, you is did. That it was amazing. Okay. Okay, okay. You did perfect, Travis. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, um, <laughs> if, if they didn't have the... the the threat of annihilation from from uh, Dream City coming. Mm. I think that Caleb would probably, probably. I, I think Caleb and Essek would 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 if if he wants would spend time uh, digging through this shit for years on and off. Yeah, we're still um, talking about the books and stuff. Uh, sure. Um, okay. Moving on quickly, uh, Caleb and Essek successfully pulled off the gamble of using the mini beacon to give everyone a long rest, uh, which was clutch. What was it like to perform magic of that magnitude? Oh, geez. I mean, thank goodness we have a Dunamancy expert with us who would know to crush up uh, a gobstopper of Dunamancy to do that because it had not occurred to me. It is not in the player's handbook. That was uh, very helpful. Um, we were kind of <laughs> kicking ourselves trying to figure out how the hell to... We we're trying to get to the Feywild to repeat that mm -hmm. magic of campaign one. That wasn't going to work. They weren't going to let us just sit around and sit in the tower. That wasn't going to work. So it was merch appreciated. Merch I, I kind of thought he would have wanted to. I mean, probably he did. Probably would have wanted to hold on to that that little gumball. But uh, but I guess I, he sacrificed it. Yeah, he's he's doing a lot to 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 um to atone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, Z's. Makes sense. It's going to be complicated if they all live, and and when we get back, like if I I think a lot about the long term for like what are the decades after this, and mm -hmm. you know there's people who want him dead in his own country. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think one of the things that has to happen is that the Mighty Nine has to sort of like, I don't know, it's hard. I mean, a lot of people a lot of people died, and his his thumbs are in that, but also. Potentially, many, many more uh, are not going to die because a, a big city didn't come and take a dump on it. On right. World. Oh no, right. it's complicated. We'll have to try but to help them out. Those are the questions that at that heroes, anti heroes, and those that have yet to decide or have to deal with. You know, when you're, the stakes are this high, so that's part of weighing the odds. You know. Mm. Well, I'm curious because, and you've kind of loosely touched on this 
before mm-hmm. that Essek was kind of supposed to be a bad guy. And then we made friends with him and his heart uh, grew three sizes that yeah, day. Yeah, you totally grinched that motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Essek, what was his plan? Essek, Essek was designed to not be like a major antagonist, but to be an antagonistic force in the world. You guys kind of barged in to the Kreen dynasty and gave this extremely sought after, thought lost artifact that is intrinsic to their entire culture and religion. And as soon as you did that, Essek was like, well, first off, I know how they got that beacon and I'm attached to this. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that smuggled it out. So I need to get in real close with these people and keep an eye on everything they do because they're now the biggest loose end on my guarded mm. person. You know, like like you know, if, if it's like committing murder and someone walks in and says, like, I found a boot in your yard, and he's like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> you guys, you guys brought this in. And he was like, <laughs> I he's like, I have to get the other mouth. So he he immediately was like, I'll take care of them. I'll work with their business, I'll figure out where they're going, and I'll be their their, you know, Lied. chaperone is essentially. And so it was him just trying to cover his ass while also trying to figure out what you were up to, what your connections were, how much you knew. And then the more he got to know you guys, because his whole goal was just to keep this thing going with the dynasty. He was fed up with a lot of the political structure of, of, of the dynasty. Uh, or keep his thing going, with, sorry, with the, with the assembly. He was fed up with, with a lot of the dynasty's kind of zealotry and the, the he doesn't really have any formal interest in the Lux and he thinks that it's misguided. He thinks that, that there's a lack of, of interest in seeing what Dunamancy can actually do because everything is regimented instead by the cultural history of it and he just wants to advance to see what is possible. And he found partnership in the in the assembly that way. But you guys kept like inviting him over for dinner and <laughs> we were asking about his, his eggs. <laughs> yeah. For real. When we left him, I was like, well, I really hope that I, I, I see things that, that I have in common with him and I empathize, but he's got all, he's going to need years to unpack his shit or he's not, or he's just going to bend back and do all the things he was doing before without us. And then one time we met up with him again, he's a changed man. Yeah. Well, he, he was still struggling. He, he didn't know who he was. And at a certain point, your guys interaction kind of showed him that he could be better, and he was struggling with the I, the con, being convinced that it was too late for him. And so it was this idea of like, I've already fucked up my entire life, and I didn't realize it until I found people that actually cared to look past my position and my abilities. And he'd been kind of a solitary figure his whole life, except for like his relationship with his brother, like, he didn't get along with his parents, he didn't get along with most people in the dynasty unless they helped him maintain and advance his position of power and influence. And so, you guys fucked him up. Is that why he wasn't consecuted? Yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he, he refused to do it um, because mm-hmm. he didn't believe in it and he had odd theories about how consecution would affect the, the dominance of use and manipulation of Dunamancy. Oh. Um, so yeah, his the, lying about it was just about going along with the zealotry and not exactly because he, did, he, he didn't want people to think that there was something up. Yeah, staying part of the tapestry around him. Exactly. Like a, a large part of his early times was just trying to deflect and you know misdirect and like, don't look at me. I'm just here, just here paying attention. I got nothing to do with any of this. It's weird, huh? You know. And then the more you got to know him, he eventually kind of let that fall away. Yeah, I was not expecting any of that. Neither were we. He's such a cool character. Yeah. He, he became so much more of a central character than I anticipated, too. He was fun to role play. I really enjoyed whenever he got pulled into the story. It was awesome. You made him float, man. What else were we supposed yeah, to do? Yeah, I know, yeah. right? Yeah. That's all you have Nobody to do. Else floats the in minute this you described him, and everyone's like, he's hot. You yeah. know we're going to interact with him. <laughs> all you have to do is make a character that does one cool thing, and they don't attack us immediately, and we'll love them forever. <laughs> right. That's so true. Are you powerful? Essick awesome. You're our friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> he reminds me of a. Remember in um, from boss from goth to boss, mm-hmm. an IT crowd that guy, yep. and how they would just sometimes when he entered and exit rooms, they would just put him on the dolly and pull him out. Yep, yep. It's kind of reminded me of. Yep. <laughs> he just no, That's a good reference. <laughs> <laughs> I have to know. I know Danny Carr has to know. Who was Varen, Essex's brother? We never got to meet Essex's brother. Yeah, you didn't. <laughs> and in my head. He's also super hot. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, he's he's kind of the he's the himbo of the family in my mind. He's I'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, he's he's the younger, taller, the more athletic brother of the family. No clothes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> shirtless all the time. No, no, no. He okay. he walks. He walks in the ground. Oh, uh, but he's, he was float, but also, but like at a, at a side angle, like a one. Like on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Essig floats. He, he wears Vans. Yeah. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my Rather god. Yeah. So yeah. He's just constantly drifting. He's just like <laughs> Um No no, he's he's just kind of, you know, as opposed to his brother, who's very much eschewed the dynasty culture, and his parents were very deeply steeped in the culture. Varen kind of rides the line where he he understands why his brother is the way he is, but he also believes a lot in the dynasty and and the the faith that the Luxon and the whole idea gives. And he like partially believes it, but he's he's like a He's like, yeah, I'm Christian, kind of, because I was raised on it, but I'm also not, you know, evangelical. Um, they have a Lux and Rock band? Uh, probably, yes. yeah. Yes? Yeah. He's got, he's got a little poo shell necklace with the little symbol of the bright queen on it. Sure. Yep. Lux and talk. Uh. <laughs> the beacon will rise. But yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> oh my God. This has gotten away nope. from me nope. entirely. <laughs> to no one's surprise. I love this. Uh, <laughs> I love this head cannon. But yeah, no, he's he's just he's stationed at Bazazan. He's they hear that I'm a beacon. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm a beacon oh, for you. Somebody was real deep. <laughs> Oof. Oh, man. We'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's just he's he's stationed in Bazazan. He's he's uh he's not like an upper upper ranking warrior, but he's 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 pretty well respected and uh he kind of the only bond that Essek had before any of you was with him growing up. He's like the, the brother that kind of got him and they got along okay in a family that Essek did not get along with at all and was surrounded by people he didn't get along with. But Would we have ever crossed paths with him? You you would have if you had probably spent more time or asked around for more people of station in oh. Bazuzan. But you guys only stayed there for a night and then defaced property and then left. <laughs> That's what we Which do. happens. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, no, it yeah, makes all the sense. Stone. I'm <laughs> sure we left a dick in our wake. You did. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we did. And you changed the sign of of the end you were staying. So. Yeah. What was the? What did I change the name? To? I don't remember. I don't remember either. Balzazan. Probably. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. So many dick signs. <laughs> we got uh, another donation coming in from Scarlet. Uh, hey, Matthew Mercer, can you talk about Essex Thelis? Is is oh. doing as Essex the Thelis? Thelis. Yeah. Essex Thelis is. Uh, particularly a character from Critical Role. Um, uh, he's doing good, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's de definitely sort of in uh, a light Eastern European voice. He's, uh, there's a darkness to him, and he has done many terrible things, and uh, in, uh, in the time that has had commenced since the campaign completed, he has um, spent some time uh, conjecturing over the things he's done in hopes to make amends, while also possibly taking up knitting. <laughs> I, I love how you just go, he's done many terrible things over time. Pepe the Spastic. No, it's nothing. It so came through, good. if it came through as a request for Mr. Mercer, I would love to hear an anecdote from Essex's childhood, perhaps including his best Varen impression. We can hold my song off for that donation from Anonymous that was, and go right. Whoever did that, seriously, Go thank right you. to Matt Mercer, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Can't, can't say no to that. Well, um... <laughs> In certain childhoods, it can grow a bit um, challenging having a brother, especially one who is a bit rambunctious and does not necessarily appreciate your um, studious duties. So when you go to read to yourself silently in the mornings uh, before, you know, not playing with the children that avoid you at the various open play spaces, and you find that your um, study book has been filled with jam. It's a bit frustrating. And when you find out or assume that it is your brother Varen who did so, and you go and tell him, please do not put gem into my books. And he turns to you and says, well, that wasn't me. That would be ridiculous. What do you think? Is that so funny? Meh, meh, meh. I still hate him. I still, I don't really hate him. He's one, he's, he's sweet, a bit misguided. But um, nevertheless, I think back to that. And to this day, I realized that that was when I began my appreciation for gem. Not because I like the flavor, <laughs> but because it reminds me of my brother. And we've been apart for some time, so when I have the opportunity, I'm thankful for it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Bravo.
What facet of your character would annoy you the most if you got stuck living with them as freshman college roommate? Oh, oh God. What NPC? Um, uh, God. I don't know the big one. Like, I, I don't have a player character. Like, I, I, um, well. We could keep with Estros. Estros, you've done. Estros, or... Hytroga, there's... Uh... Yeah, so we don't have to stick to this campaign. We can get weird. That's true. Like, what you uh, feeling? Essek. 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 No, I already see it. Oh. Uh, yeah, I feel it. Yeah, like I, already, I already feel it. <laughs> I think it would be... A person that that constantly constantly sits around and mopes emotionally and <laughs> and needs support and help, but will never ever ever let anybody in to try and help them. The person that sits there and goes like, "No, don't worry, I'm fine." <laughs> oh no, <laughs> buddy! I'm like, you want to talk about it? No. Like, well, if you're gonna be like this, like, this is just you really thing. need to talk about this. Does 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 he label all of his food in the refrigerator? Oh, <laughs> wow. I feel, I, he feels like a labeler. He yeah. kind of feels like a labeler. I, th I think in, I, I think at the beginning of being roommates, mm -hmm. no. But then them realizing that the food can get mixed up, then they start labeling everything. everything. <laughs> because they're used, to, they're used to being on their own and then having a roommate is such a shift they don't necessarily like. I know, I know you've had, had my orange juice because I put the tape right at the level of the orange juice and now it's lower and I haven't had any orange juice. That is, I've, I've had that roommate. And yep. I, and I know, I know Essek uh, would very much become that roommate. <laughs> I look, I look, I look, I look for It's fine. It's fine. You can have the orange juice. I just, I, I, I just wish you'd tell me. And to be honest. I just want you to know how much you're drinking of mine. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know. I, I think Caleb probably fits in a similar category. So I think I was actually. I going to say that they, Caleb they live together pretty yeah, well. Caleb would be super passive aggressive. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I think together they, so they well fit well. so well labeled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it works. Their oh. whole really home well. is going to be like the home edit. <laughs> right, right. Like everything's very organized. <laughs> And like glass like containers, yeah, glass containers. Yep. my dream, like matching label. <laughs> yes. The oh. idea of like, like seeing Kill in the back and reading a book and Essex going through a box and just goes like, does this bring you joy? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Thank, thank, thank you. Oh, oh <laughs> if they, if, I, I want anyway. a whole <laughs> fan fiction of that, of them clearing uh, clutter out of their home. Yeah. <laughs>